Flexible AC Transmission System FAX is an integrated concept based on power electronic switching converters and dynamic controllers to enhance the system utilization and power transfer capacity as well as the stability, security, reliability, and power quality of AC system interconnections. Flexible Alternating Current Transmission System FAX as they are generally known, are new devices that improve transmission systems. FAX is a static equipment used for the AC transmission of electrical energy. It is generally a power electronics-based device. Meant to enhance controllability and increase power transfer capability. FAX can be described as the modification of the AC transmission system by using power electronics or with the help of other static controllers. There are many limitations for the large AC system and some of them are voltage stability problems, reactive power problems, steady state stability, transient stability, frequency control, etc. FAX is a static equipment used for the AC transmission of electrical energy. It is meant to enhance controllability and increase power transfer capability of the network. It is generally a power electronics-based device. FAX is defined by IEEE as a power electronic-based system and other static equipment that provide control of one or more AC tran transmission system parameters to enhance controllability and increase power transfer capability. FAX could be connected, in series with the power system series compensation, in shunt with the power system shunt compensation, both in series and in shunt with the power system. Benefits of FAX devices, regulation of power flows in prescribed transmission routes. Reduces the need for construction of new transmission lines, capacitors, and reactors. Provides greater ability to transfer power between controlled areas. These devices help to damp the power oscillations that could damage the equipment. Improves the transient stability of the system. Controls real and reactive power flow in the line independently. Damping of oscillations which can threaten security or limit the usable line capacity. Better utilization of existing transmission system assets. Increased transmission system reliability and availability lower vulnerability to load changes, line faults. Increased dynamic and transient grid. Stability and reduction of loop flows, increased quality of supply for sensitive industries through mitigation of flicker, frequency variations, environmental benefits. The facts can be described as a collection of controllers like phase shifters, static VAR compensator, etc. The major operation of the FAX system is by varying the apparent impedance of a particular transmission line so that the flow of power can be improved over the required path. So by controlling the impedance of the transmission line with the help of the electronic devices in the FAX system we could achieve a con constant power flow in the required path. The power flow can be maintained in case of any variations in the load levels in the AC network and also in case of any contingencies. Mostly we can use FAC devices to do the dynamic control of the voltage, it can also control the impedance and phase angle of high voltage AC transmission lines. Basic types of FAX controllers, FAX controllers are classified as series controllers, shunt controllers, combined series series controllers, combined series shunt controllers. Basic types of fax controllers, series controllers, it could be a variable impedance capacitor, reactor, etc. or a power electronic based variable source of main frequency, subsynchronous and harmonic frequencies to serve the desired need. Inject a voltage in series with the line. If the voltage is in phase quadrature with the current, controller supplies or consumes reactive power. Any other phase involves control of both active and reactive power. Shunt controllers, it could be a variable impedance capacitor, reactor, etc. or a power electronic-based variable source or combination of both. Inject a current in the system. If the current is in phase quadrature with the voltage, controller supplies or consumes reactive power. Any other phase involves control of both active and reactive power. Combined series, series controllers, it could be a combination of separate series controllers or unified controller. Series controllers supply reactive power for each line and real power among lines via power link. Interline power flow controller balance real and reactive power flow in the lines. Combined series, shunt controllers, it could be a combination of separate ser series and shunt controllers or unified power flow controller. Inject current into the system with the shunt controller and voltage in series with the line with series controller. 
When the controllers are unified, exchange real power between series and shunt controllers via power link. Choice of the controller, series controller controls the current power flow by controlling the driving voltage. To control current power flow and damp oscillations, series controller is several times more powerful than shunt controller. Shunt controller injects current in the line thus it is used for more effective voltage control and damp voltage oscillations. Injecting the voltage in series with the line can improve the voltage profile. But shunt controller is more effective to improve the voltage profile at substation bus. For a given MVA, size of series controller is small compared to shunt controller. Shunt controllers cannot control the power flow in the lines. Series controllers should bypass short circuit currents and handle dynamic overloads. Controllers with gate turn-off devices are based on DC to AC converters and exchange active-reactive power with AC lines. This requires energy storage device. Energy storage systems are needed when active power is involved in the power flow. A controller with storage is more effective for controlling the system dynamics. A converter-based controller can be designed with high pulse order or pulse width modulation to reduce the low order harmonic generation to a very low level. A converter can be designed to generate the correct waveform in order to act as an active filter. Static VR compensators SVC, shunt connected static VAR generators and or absorbers whose outputs are varied so as to control specific power system quantities the term static is used to denote that there are no moving or rotating components. Basic types, types of SVCs, thyristor controlled reactor TCR, thyristor switched capacitor TSC, saturated reactor, a static VAR system SVS is an aggregation of SVCs and mechanically switched capacitors or reactors whose outputs are coordinated. When operating at its capacitive limit, an SVC behaves like a simple capacitor. Static Synchronous Compensator Staccom, this shunt-connected static compensator was developed as an advanced static VR compensator where a voltage source converter VSC is used instead of the controllable reactors and switched capacitors. Although VSCs require self-commutated power semiconductor devices such as GTO, IGBT, IGCT, MCT, etc., with higher costs and losses unlike in the case of variable impedance type SVC which use thyristor devices. A STATCOM is comparable to a synchronous condenser or compensator which can supply variable reactive power and regulate the voltage of the bus where it is connected. The equivalent circuit of a synchronous condenser SC is shown in figure. A STATCOM previously called as static condenser STATCON has a similar equivalent circuit as that of a SC. The AC voltage is directly proportional to the DC voltage VDC across the capacitor C figure which shows the circuit for a single phase STATCOM. There are many technical advantages of a STATCOM over a SVC. These are primarily, faster response, requires less space as bulky passive components such as reactors are eliminated, inherently modular and relocatable, it can be interfaced with real power sources such as battery, fuel cell, or SME superconducting magnetic energy storage, a STATCOM has superior performance during low voltage condition as the reactive current can be maintained constant. In an SVC, the capacitive reactive current drops linearly with the voltage at the limit, limit of capacitive susceptance. It is even possible to increase the reactive current in a STATCOM under transient conditions if the devices are rated for the transient overload. In an SVC, the maximum reactive current is determined by the rating of the passive components reactors and capacitors. STATCOM is a regulating poor power factor and poor voltage device. Based on a power electronics voltage source converter and can act as either a source or sink of reactive AC power. If connected to a source of power it can also provide active AC power. STATCOM provides better damping characteristics than the SVC as it is able to transiently exchange active power with the system can be based on a voltage sourced or current sourced converter. Figure shows one with voltage sourced converter, driven by a DC voltage source, capacitor, effectively an alternating voltage source behind a coupling reactance, controllable in magnitude, can be operated over its full output current range even at very low typically 0.2 PU system voltage levels, requires fewer harmonic filters and capacitors than an SVC, and no reactors, significantly more compact, structure of STATCOM, basically, the STATCOM system is comprised of power converters, set of coupling reactors or a step-up transformer, controller. Advantages of STATCOM, the reactive components used in the STATCOM are much smaller than those in the SVC. The characteristics of STATCOM are superior. 
The output current of STATCOM can be controlled up to the rated maximum capacitive or inductive range. Reduction of the capacity of semiconductor power converter and capacitor bank to one to one half of those for the conventional SVC. Better transient response of the order of quarter cycle. Reduction of harmonic filter capacity. Reduction of size of high value air cord reactor. Reduction of equipment volume and footprint. SVC controls establishes three identical shunt admittances, one for each phase. Consequently, with unbalanced system voltages the compensating currents in each phase would become different. It is possible to control the three compensating admittances individually by adjusting delay angle of the TCRs so as to make the three compensating currents identical. However in this case triple and harmonic content would be different in each phase and their normal cancellation through delta connection would not place. This operation mode thus would generally require the installation of the usually unneeded third harmonic filters. It would help to increase the power transfer without the need for adding new transmission lines. Reduction in power transmission cost. Steady state and dynamic voltage control. Stability of the system and also the quality of the voltage is increased too. Oscillation damping. We can utilize the assets in the existing transmission system properly. Transmission system availability and reliability can be increased. Stability and reduction of the loop flow. Supply quality improvement. Quick voltage regulation. Power transfer can be increased over long AC lines. The machines which are connected to the system can be utilized properly. SVC controls establishes three identical shunt admittances, one for each phase. Consequently, with unbalanced system voltages the compensating currents in each phase would become different. It is possible to control the three compensating admittances individually by adjusting delay angle of the TCRs so as to make the three compensating currents identical. However in this case triple and harmonic content would be different in each phase and their normal cancellation through delta connection would not place. This operation mode thus would generally require the installation of the usually unneeded third harmonic filters. The operation of the STATCOM under unbalanced system conditions is different from that of the SVC, but the consequences of the such operation are similar. The STATCOM operation is governed by fundamental physical law requiring that the net instantaneous power at the AC and DC terminals of the voltage-sourced converters employed must be always be equal. This is because the converter has no internal energy storage and thus energy transfer through it is absolutely direct, and consequently the net instantaneous power at the AC and DC terminals must be equal. The loss contribution of power semiconductors and related components to the total compensator losses is higher for the STATCOM than for the SVC. This is because presently available power semiconductor devices with internal turn-off capability have higher conduction losses than conventional thyristors. Thus the technological advances probably will have helped to reduce the overall losses of the STATCOM more than those of the SVC. From the standpoint of physical installation, because the STATCOM not only controls but also internally generates the reactive output power, the large capacitor and reactor banks with their associated switchgear and protection, used in conventional thyristors controlled SVCs, are not needed. This results in a significant reduction in overall size about 30 to 40 percent, as well as installation labor and cost. Applications of fax, load flow can be controlled in the meshed system, the fact controllers can be used for steady state applications, this device is used to do the congestion management, this device is used for dynamic applications, in this application the fact device would improve the transient stability, and also the voltage stability, it is also used in the deregulated environment, power system interconnection can be achieved with the help of fact devices, it can be also used for synchronous elimination.